So it is seven o'clock. So I'm going to call the meeting to order. We're going to start with a uh, roll call, which remember you have to state your name and the location you're in so that we are compliant with the Open Meetings Act. Okay, well, I'll start with Melanie. And don't forget to unmute. It's the quote 2020, you're on mute. So uh, we'll start with Melanie. Uh, present uh, in Swain County, North Carolina. Oh, made it exciting. Okay, Carla. Carla gets present in Royal Oak, Michigan. Catherine? Catherine Reban Payne, president in Royal Oak, Michigan. Mark? Uh, Mark Walton, president in Royal Oak, Michigan. Aaron? Aaron Van Beek, uh, president in Royal Oak, Michigan. Roxanne? Roxanne Plater, president in Royal Oak, Michigan. Okay, we'll, we'll do Eric. We'll swear you in, it'll be official in a second, but Eric? <laughs> Eric McLeod, president in Royal Oak, Michigan. Hey, Eric. And uh, I'm Stacy Woodward, and I'm present in Royal Oak, Michigan. Melanie, you get the prize for the most interesting location. Excellent. All right, next is public comment. Emily, any public? Uh, no, I do not see anybody in the attendees list. So from what I understand, then we have no public comment, nobody watching. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, next, we have a very exciting uh, thing to do, which is swearing in our brand new trustee, Mr. Eric McLeod. We're so happy to meet you. So what we'll do is we'll do, we'll swear you in, um, and then we'll do just a round of introductions so that, uh, we can all hear about you and you can hear about us. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the text of the oath where you sent the oath. Um, I don't think so. Okay. So I'm going to put the text of it in the chat. And then it's it's just like any other swearing in where um, I'll say it and you repeat back and then it's very official. And then after this, um, we'll make arrangements to sign the actual oath and that stays on file with the city. Perfect. Okay, you ready? Yep. Okay. So uh, I, Eric McLeod. I, Eric McLeod. Do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. Do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the State of Michigan. The Constitution of the State of Michigan. The Charter and Ordinances of the City of Royal Oak. The Charter and Ordinances of the City of Royal Oak. And the policies approved by the Royal Oak Public Library Board of Trustees. And the policies approved by the Royal Oak Public Library Board of Trustees. I will endeavor to secure and maintain an honest and efficient administration of the affairs of the City of Royal Oak. I will endeavor to secure and maintain an honest and efficient administration of the affairs of the city of Royal Oak. Free from partisan control and to perform the duties of trustee of the Royal Oak Public Library to the best of my ability. Free from partisan control and to perform the duties of trustee of the Royal Oak Public Library to the best of my ability. Excellent, welcome Eric. Let's unmute and clap. Welcome. Welcome. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so what I'd like to do is just do a sort of round of introductions. And um, Eric, do you want to go first by any chance? Yeah, yeah. So first and foremost, I want to thank Mayor Fournier for the opportunity to sit on the board with you all. I'm excited and thrilled to be a part of this, uh, this process, especially with the service so important as the library. Um, I think city libraries are the heart and soul and beacon of any city. Um, so it's important that we maintain a it's just a safe, uh, a well-balanced, well well-rounded uh, library system for our, our citizens of City of Royal Oak. Um, you know, for me, I remember being a young kid and going to the library and realizing like, this is where, you know, knowledge is stored. You know, these are the places where communities gather and this is where your imagination can truly be uh, sort of sort of lifted, right? And this is, this is a place where your imagination can thrive. And so having this responsibility is definitely, um, it's a serious responsibility, but I'm excited to support uh, the City of Royal Oak can work together with you all in the process. So thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Eric. Um, try to top that, everybody. I don't know. Who's going to go next? I'll go. Okay. Um, I'm Carla Getz. I have been on the library board for about four and a half years, I think. And I've got three kids who are 11, 9, and will be seven this week. And they... I don't, 
I go to the library for them and now I go for me and um, I'm really happy with all the changes and that we've been working on over the last four years and it's a really exciting time to be working to better the library so and welcome I'm glad you're joining us. Thank you. Carla would you mind um, and when you do your introductions could you just um, say something about some committees that you serve on and a little bit about them. Um, Eric, in January, we can sort out which committees you might like to join and maybe this would help to hear what they're about. Um, well, I chair the budget finance committee and we work on the budget for the year, but then as adjustments need to be made, um, we need to decide if it fits within the budget um, to be able to consider other changes at the library. Um, I'm also on the facilities committee, which is chaired by Mark, and we just keep tabs on all things related to the building and the facilities. Um, the, the big thing that's going on right now is that um, the renovation project that's been going on in the space study, and that's really been spearheaded by the facilities committee. Um, and there is room on both of those committees for another member. Good plug, Carla, good plug. Okay, who wants to go next? Catherine. Hi, Eric, my name's Catherine Rebant Payne. I have been on the library board for a little more than a year now. Um, I filled a partial term and just got reappointed to a regular term. Um, I am, um, in addition to the library board, I am the director of marketing and communications for Oakland Family Services which is um, a large nonprofit in Oakland County. And I also grew up going to the library, the Royal Oak Public Library, <laughs> um, and uh, have such fond memories of that. And I'm glad to be back and serving the Royal Oak Public Library. I also worked in a library for a number of years. Um, so I, I always keep coming back to libraries and, and in service of them, because I think they're very important for a community. I serve on the fundraising committee and that one is um, to find different means of generating extra funds for the library. We just did a, a letter to uh, all cardholders homes and we're looking at different other fundraising options. And I also serve on the director of goals and evaluation, which sets the um, evaluation, uh, just the performance appraisal for the director every year and um, generates that. And Roxanne, who, you're spending one meeting with, <laughs> but she is the chair of both of those. So um, I serve on both of those committees. So again, welcome. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. Mark, I think you had your hand up. Yes. Um, welcome, Eric. We're happy to have you. Um, I, I, uh, I'm a retiree. I uh, actually retired twice. I was a teacher and then I went to work as a union business agent. Um, but I've been retired uh, since 2011, and I've served on the board. This is the end of my fourth year. As uh, Carla indicated, I'm the chair of the facilities committee. Uh, I also serve on the budget and policy committees. And uh, I guess that's it. Nice to meet you, Mark. My pleasure. Roxanne. Hi, Eric. It's nice to meet you, and I'm sorry I'm Probably this will be the only time I'll get to meet you in business because this is my last meeting. It's been nine years. So, um, but I won't be 100% gone because I'm actually already on the calendar to do a program in June. And it ties into the fact that I am the project manager through Michigan State University Extension um, as a private for the butterfly garden at the library. So basically I'm the library's unpaid gardener in the summertime. So I will be doing that. So I am around with the, those two things, but yes, I am chair of the, the fundraising and director goals and evaluation committees. We just, and you of course would not receive it because you wouldn't know what to evaluate, but the evaluations just went out to staff and the board and I'm going to talk about that in the report thing when we get up there quickly, but those just went out. We need to get them done because at the January meeting, the board decides, you know, 
if it's the report from the evaluations approved, it makes a recommendation for a raise, or of course, it's never happened since I've been on the library board, but if there was a serious problem, they may be recommending something less positive. <laughs> So no, it's interesting, but those obviously there's going to be an opening on both committees. So, and they always, um, there's a, the, the director evaluation is a once a year kind of intense thing, but then it's there, but the fundraising is, if you've got resources and like just constantly clicking and finding ideas, it's a great fit. Well, it's a pleasure to meet you and we will miss you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> you will. Yeah. Uh, Melanie. Hey Eric. Hey Eric. Um, glad to meet you. Welcome to the library board. Um, I'm Melanie. I've been in Royal Oak for 15-ish, 15-ish years now. I'm on the city commission right now. Been on the city commission for three years and I've been on the library board for four years. Um, I've got three kids in Royal Oak schools. Got two at the middle school for one brief shining moment and then and one at Keller Elementary. Um, I can't think what else to say about this. Oh, I guess I'm a, I'm a legal aid attorney. Uh oh, my connection is unstable. Can anyone hear me? You're very okay. stable. Uh, okay, good. Very stable genius. Um, so I'm a legal aid attorney, but I haven't practiced for a number of years. I've spent the last five years back in my alma mater, which is Michigan Law School, as a career counselor for students who are pursuing public interest careers in the legal profession. Um, so I... I think all my community, oh no, wait, yeah, all my communities have been talked about. Oh no, wait, policy review has not been talked about, has it? No. So I am, as of last month, the chair of the policy review committee because when Brandon got um, the city commission spot, you can't have two city commissioners, so we bumped him. Um, and I, my punishment was to, that I had to be the chair of the policy review committee, which, uh, as you might guess, reviews the policies. And so we have a set of library policies that we review throughout the year, and you'll see it's on the calendar today to look at how we review those. And then there's other policies that come up, like right now we've been, there's been a, it's been quite a busy year because we had to make a whole new set of policies around the pandemic. Um, and we support the staff. I mean, the staff basically does most of the policy writing because they know what's happening <laughs> in the library, but we support them and um, try to help figure that out. Um, and I guess I was also the chair of the nominate, the brief lived nominating committee this year. So that committee only meets for like a month of the year at, at the very end. And it's to nominate for the um, board for the next year. Um, I think that's it. Pleasure to meet you as well. Erin. Hey, hi, Eric. Uh, it's nice to have you. Uh, my name is Erin, and I've lived in Royal Oak for six or seven years now. I have a five-year-old and a three-year-old, and um, before COVID, we were at the library probably twice a week. We love the library, love the staff, so it just made sense that uh, if I was going to spend so much time there, I might as well volunteer for the library, so that's why I joined the board. Um, we do share something a little in common. I have only actually met my fellow board members uh, twice, once for a meeting in February and once for an emergency meeting to shut down the library. So um, but I know, I know um, my fellow board members just by their screenshots. So we share that in common, <laughs> but it's great to have you. Thank you, it's nice meeting you. Emily. Great. Hi, Eric. Again, welcome to the board. We're so happy to have you. Um, a little bit about me. I have been director here for just under two years. It's been a crazy two years for sure. Um, but I'm so happy to be in this position. I started at Royal Oak Library in 2009, and that was my first library job. That was while I was still in school. I started in the circulation department, and I absolutely fell in love with the library. I took some detours at some points for full-time jobs. You know, I was um, a children's librarian at Commerce Township Library, but as soon as a position opened up at Royal Oak, I was right back there as um, head of youth, and I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. This is, you know, this library is a really special place and um, it's been um, just, um, it's been a great experience being director, a very difficult one at this time, but um, I'm just so proud of everything that we've been able to accomplish, especially since March. It's, it, we've done a lot regardless of the situation. Thank you. Thank you for helping me transition to this as well, because I know Emily was shooting me emails, so I appreciate that. Absolutely, no problem. Great. 
And hi, Eric, I'm Stacy Woodward. I'm the current uh, board president of the Royal Oak Public Library. And we're so excited to have you. Um, so let's see, I've been on the library board since 2012. So about eight years. And um, I've served on mostly the budget and strategic planning committees. Um, the whole time I've been on the board, I've been on those committees, I believe. And uh, it's been really fun. The reason I joined the board in the first place is I'm a um, social studies teacher by trade. And I think there are two institutions that really are critical in a democracy. One is public schools and the other are public libraries. So um, I'm here for all those nerdy civics reasons. I think they're critical in communities. So that's why I'm here. And uh, I am also a mom and a wife. I have two girls that are, I mean, they're technically in school, but really it's at my house um, in Royal Oak. <laughs> One is attending middle school from my living room um, at Royal Oak Middle School. And the other is attending fourth grade from uh, an spare room upstairs, um, which is going as well as it can be, right? And uh, yeah, so I've been going to the library. I've grew, I was born and raised in Royal Oak. I've been going to the library since I was, forever. Like some of my first memories are at the Royal Oak Public Library. So it holds a near and dear place in my heart too. It's a pleasure to meet you as well, Stacey. I don't think I got to share a little bit of personal side about me. Yeah, let's hear it. Yeah. So uh, I've been in Royal Oak for about six years. Um, I live here with my wife. Uh, we have two dogs, no kids yet, <laughs> uh, especially not, not during this pandemic. But uh, but yeah, I, I definitely um, feel like I've been embraced by the community. This has been one of the, the best places I've lived, you know, since coming from Michigan State. Um, I currently, I work in diversity and inclusion, so I do DNI work at an advertising agency in Detroit, um, but I'm also a doctoral student, so I'm finishing my doctorate. I should be done, hopefully, hopefully by January, February. I should be finished, and I'll be Dr. Eric McLeod, uh, so I'm excited for that, but again, yeah, thank you all uh, for being, for allowing me to be a part of this, this process, and I'm excited for uh, what's next. That is so exciting, Eric. What's the doctorate in? Doctor. Yeah, so my doctorate is in organizational leadership, but also um, higher education. So I've, I've done worked in higher ed for a long time prior to actually going into advertising, which is kind of a weird shift. Um, but my focus is specifically on diversity and inclusion, specifically focusing on non-traditional students um, and their access to college, uh, colleges and universities. Exciting. I'm sure that expertise will actually be helpful at the library in a lot of ways. We're really excited to have you and be thinking about those committees because I'll be asking. <laughs> There's also a list of the committees um, at the bottom of our agenda if it was too much to take in. And of course, any of us will answer any questions about them. Okay, we're going to move into announcements and communications. Are there any? No, okay. Next, uh, approval of the agenda, item five. Um, I actually, uh, before we move this, I'd like to make an amendment to add an action item 10G, and it's a um, adoption of, for a recognition um, resolution. Um, I'm say that, I'm gonna say that you're making a motion with, uh, with an amendment, because you can't make the amendment first. So you're doing them together. How's that feel? Okay, Melanie, yes. That. I will second that. Thanks, Carla. Discussion? Could you say again what the, it's a 10 -day? It's a adoption of a recognition resolution. And, and 10G, where was it? 10G. What's the 10G? Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any discussion? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Let the record reflect that this motion was passed unanimously. Okay, next we have acceptance of the minutes. Um, um, since Eric's new, do you want to clarify how the voting happens when we're in the remote format? Yes, so the way that this works, we use Robert's rules. Um, and if you were face-to-face, -face, we would just do that. Um, but because we're in Zoom and we're trying to comply with the Open Meetings Act, <laughs> uh, we do a voice vote and if, um, if there's dissension, if there's some yeses and nos, then we'll do a roll call. So it's clear who voted for, for what. And then um, you'll hear me say, because most of the things usually pass kind of unanimously. It's not that contentious usually, but you'll hear me say, um, 
let the record reflect that it was passed unanimously, that's for the record so that we comply with the Open Meetings Act. Is that what you meant, Carla? Okay, good. And as we're going, Eric, ask any questions. There's a weird learning curve for joining a, any kind of board, but a library board maybe in particular, I don't know. I'm okay. taking the notes for my last time as secretary, but it's really a fun job. You should sign up for it next year. <laughs> yeah, yes. See a lot of Don't knowing. let them talk you into that, Eric. <laughs> okay. Um, so next on the agenda, acceptance of the minutes. We have two sets of minutes. We have our regular October minutes, and then we had uh, a special meeting on November 19th. Carla motions to accept the October 27th minutes. Is there a second? Aaron seconds. Okay. Um, Discussion. So I think that um, an, a title was left off for the finance committee. And there's just like a gap there with like F and space. Oh. <laughs> Uh, I think Emily did that after I sent it to her. <laughs> or I think it was facilities committee. Facilities committee. Emily. Facilities committee. Okay. Okay. Um, so moved approval with edit of uh, heading. Facilities committee heading. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Any other discussion about the October 27th minutes? Erin. Um, can I just, I want to make a clarification. In the October minutes under the library director's report, uh, we mentioned how Emily had talked about the COVID grants, the Oakland County grants, and we have a figure of about 48,000 so far in receipts. And later under the city commission report, the estimate is 39,000. Were those for two different grants? Emily? No, I think that it was probably just an incorrect first number. It was about 49,000. Okay. Great. So it was, I, okay. So they should both be 49. Yeah. Thank you, Aaron. Close eye to those minutes. Any other discussion? See, Eric, it's fun to be the secretary. It's fun. See how it's fun? She's studying up is what's happening. I, you I you do have a volunteer for next year already though. <laughs> yes. Oh, okay. I volunteer for that. <laughs> Aaron is going to do it for 2021. <laughs> I didn't right. know we were getting a new board member. I volunteered too quickly. <laughs> like a rite of passage. Yeah. Right. Person comes in and do it. <laughs> That's right. Okay, all in favor of accepting the minutes for October 27th with the revisions, say aye. 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 All opposed? let the record reflect that this motion passed unanimously. Okay, there's also uh, the November 19th minutes, anybody? Carla motions to accept the no November 19th minutes. Okay. Thank you. Did you get that, Mel? Discussion? Okay, um, all in favor of accepting the November 19th Minutes as submitted, say aye. 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 Oh. I was gonna say hot tip, Aaron, for the upcoming secretary is that Carla almost always moves them, so you can just copy your notes from the previous time. That is very helpful. Oh my gosh, pro tips. Okay, uh, let the record reflect that this motion was passed unanimously. Okay, next we have financial reports. Oh man, Eric, I feel like this was my biggest learning curve, the yeah. financial reports. To this day, I'm like, wait, what does this item mean again? So don't feel bad if eight years into your tenure, you're still asking questions about these financial reports. So what I usually start with is, um, would Emily like to highlight anything? And then usually what happens is our very competent budget chair, Carla, asks some really good questions. So let's start with Emily. Is there anything you'd like to point out or? Sure. Um you may notice there was one kind of wonky looking charge where we're at 500 percent of the line items um it's the furniture expense line so i wanted to clarify what that is yeah we're we spent 506 percent of it um that was i ordered some partitions for each individual work area in the office um 
as a COVID safety measure. However, I put in for the Oakland County grant and that was part of it. That was one of the bigger expenses on that grant. So um, hopefully we'll get the, those costs reimbursed to us. Um, other than that, yeah, actually, um, you know, a lot of this, if, if that grant is approved, then a lot of our PPE costs, um, you know, some of our technology costs, all of the contactless pickup supplies, hopefully we'll see some of those funds restored for us because we had a lot of very unusual um, expenses this year in light of COVID and the new services we had to provide. So that is just the clarification I wanted to give on that one that really kind of stuck out. Thanks, Emily. Carla, sure. I'm gonna go right to you. Do you have anything? Um, not really. Um, I did want to comment that um, as I was reading your director's report and you were talking about some changes in the subscription services, um, that I was like, oh no, like, do we need to amend our budget? And then you addressed it right away. And you're like, no, we cut this other thing because it wasn't really being used. And I just really appreciate that you are evaluating the different subscriptions and services that we are providing and making those adjustments. So thank you. Absolutely. Sure. Any other questions from board members about the financial reports? Wait time on Zoom is so weird. Okay, I think we're good though. All right, uh, library director's report. Okay, so Eric, this is the part of the report that's like most of it, right? So it's like her report plus all the other department heads and like the data, all that stuff. That's that's this part of the agenda. So I always have to ask Emily anything to add because usually by the time, you know, it goes out on one day and then a bunch of things happen. So Emily, would you like to update us or anything or? You know, what I'm kind of finding is as we get towards the end of the year, we have so many things on the horizon. However, um, stuff kind of slows down a little bit before the holidays because we don't want to kick up too much before we um, and then have to break. So um, it's really kind of just finalizing a lot of the details. We're working with library design right now, um, and I'm working with Envisionware, who's going to be doing our RFID process. So we're getting everything set up to go so that we can jump right into it after the first of the year. I did want to share one other positive comment I got. I always like to share positive staff feedback. So this one came to Adrian, who has really been getting a lot of nice comments from patrons. And this one, after she helped somebody with a curbside pickup, they sent her a message that said, thank you so much. I appreciate you going above and beyond to help me out. You are a true asset to the library, which I concur with. Um, so that is the end of my report. Thanks, Emily. Uh, questions from or comments? Erin. I noticed you um, had a section on fundraising and it looks like it was off to a great start. Do you have a total number as of today? And do you know how many, not just the dollar amount, but how many separate contributions have we had? Yes. Oh, thank you. And that was actually the one thing I wanted to say. I knew there's something I was forgetting. So yes, our appeal letter went out and I couldn't believe the response we got in one day. I didn't know how it was going to look this year. Um, I know it's a lot to ask of people in a year where, you know, there's a lot of job insecurity and um, financial difficulties and people have been so insanely generous. It's just wonderful to see. We keep getting every day, we'll get a huge stack like this of letters returned. Um, so right now we are at, and this is numbers, today's numbers were not put in and I was looking through them and we got a ton of donations today and a lot of really big donations. So as of yesterday, the total was at $4,040. So that means we've already recouped all the costs it sends to, it costs to send the year end appeal letter out. And then we got at least, I would say at least $1,500 today. I didn't do a formal count of it. Um, Stephanie has been recording all those. But, um, and we're also, what I've really been pleased to see is we've kind of got the online donations situated better than we have in the past, like last year. Um, we set it up with Treasury. It used to be kind of confusing. It would go to the roots, which is now um, defunct. So we have it going to our PayPal account, the library's PayPal account, and being routed right into our donations line item. And then Treasury is sending us a report of the donations that are coming in. And I've been really pleased to see that that's taken off. You know, we've gotten probably about $500 worth of donations just coming in through PayPal. Um, and that's very easy and convenient. A lot of people prefer to donate that way too. It's just a lot easier for many people. Um, so no, we are doing exceptionally well, especially considering a really difficult year. 
Good question, Aaron. Good answer, Emily. Aaron. All right, do you know um, how many contributors contributors we have? Also, is there any way for us to know um, going forward, uh, can we tell demographics wise who's giving us uh, uh, contributions? That's a good question. Um, Probably not just because of library privacy act. We, I mean, you could like feasibly, you know, like we might have access to people's records, but um, we wouldn't necessarily want to be using that for that purpose. What we can tell is we do have the um, Yale analytics, which you subscribe to, and that can give us an idea of who our primary library users are, which we actually ran the report and it was kind of surprising to me. Um, we found out our biggest library user base is young singles in the city. And then second was families. I know I would have thought families first. <laughs> um, and then I think senior citizens was third. So, um, you know, and that can, it also shows us geographically, like where maybe people are not using the library. So that can kind of help too. You know, we were thinking about um, in the future when um, we can kind of get a better grip on how to use Gale Analytics and um, use it for better marketing to kind of tailor, like, you know, maybe tailor a peer letters based on, um, you know, who, who we may need to reach more. And also just try to tailor our campaigns to try to get, you know, the, the people who are not using the library try to, um, get them into the library and get them cards. Um, we do right now, I'm looking, we have 69 donations, again, as of yesterday, and then we got a huge stack of them today. Thank you. And a special thanks to the fundraising committee for pulling together that letter. Obviously it was convincing. People are sending their money right away. Um, and thank you. So that's Catherine and Roxanne fundraising who else uh, me and and on me and, and, and Aaron yeah nice job guys that's great okay Aaron sorry I have another question yeah um, the library of things I was just curious how it's going are things coming back in one piece um, I had some concerns initially, you know, if we're sending out a game, are we going to get all the pieces back? Is, there, is the box going to be crushed? How's it going? So far, so good. Yeah, everything's coming back and in one piece and it's going really well. Um, it's been fun. I'm really looking forward to the day when people are going to be able to browse the stuff in person um, because it's just like right now. Also, too, I want to say Ed is building part of the website, which I think will be a game changer because right now it's just kind of it's dependent on what we're promoting on social media, too. And um, they did. Adrian started adding tags to it. So it's a little bit easier to search in the catalog because at first it wasn't like you couldn't even type in library things and bring anything up. So she started adding tags, so that helps. Um, but it's going to be great once we get that part of the website, because then if people can browse online at least. Um, but no, so far, um, certainly some items I've noticed are a lot more popular than others, like the ghost hunting kit really circulates well. Um, the baking pan, some of the tools, <laughs> and then some of the board games. And I wish people would check out, like there's, there's some board, like I think there's like one or two board games that haven't been checked out yet and they are all such good games. So I really hope that- um, Emily, again, maybe me make a plug for those right now. Maybe people are listening. What yeah, are the well, I was thinking with the holidays coming up, you know, people can check those out and have them over the break. And if they're having family together, then the- play those games when I returned my books the other day in the bin you can see in it right there was a big dinosaur pan and I had to figure out where to put my books so that was fun yeah <laughs> so no we're we're moving along you know we have we have so many items in but if you'll read my report it's just what we're running into difficulty is just um TLN and having to create a lot of new records for things or putting a lot of extra work on them but um, no, we're, we're moving along with that. And I'm so excited for that collection. Thank you. Other questions about the director's report? Carla. Um, I had two things. Um, one was um, when reading through Amy's report and she commented on how the programming budget was going. Um, I just want to make sure that like um the way we had left it was that 
if they had a plan and they wished that they had more money, they could come to us with it and we could adjust our budget. So I just want to make sure that they are understanding of that, that if they wish they had more, they j just have to come to us and tell us, you know, a bit of what the plan is and, you know, we can make adjustments. Thank um, you for that. You I'm definitely gonna make that clear to them because I know like even with adults, I think they, they plan, Matt is on top of stuff and he plans really far in advance. So I think he's planned through the beginning of summer. And um, I know that they were saying that they didn't have the funds to be doing the craft kits, which are wildly popular. So I think, you know, I'm gonna talk to them about whether that would be something that they can plan for and um, submit a proposal to adjust the budget because I, I do feel like that's a really important part of the adult programming right now. So. I appreciate you saying that and um, I will pass it on to Amy and Matt. Um, and then the uh, the erase workshop that you guys did. Yeah, I was just really happy to see that. I know that there's been, um, you know, a lot of smaller things that you've done and this seemed like it was um, included all the staff and it was it was just nice to see and I'm glad that you're continuing with those those types of programmings and um, professional development. So. Sure, yeah, thank you. You know, we were disappointed that we couldn't do our, our usual in-service. This was originally, that was the idea was that, you know, we actually thought we, we might be back together at that point. We could do e-race training then. Um, it was a little bit more difficult to facilitate online. I think you saw in Adrian's report, what we ran into is people who couldn't make the first day of training then couldn't come in for the second day of training, which is kind of disappointing. But um, it, And it's hard with the part-timers and their schedules. There's a lot of people are just scheduled at their other jobs and they really just can't get off for it. But, um, you know, we tried to, what the, the group provided was the training materials. So we did pass those along to them. And um, yeah, it was definitely, it was nice. That's what a lot of people commented too, is that it was just nice to have the staff as much together as we could be. And then they did the breakout room. So I think, you know, departments got a chance to chat with each other who, you know, don't usually have as much contact as they would like, especially now with schedules being weird and people, you know, people working from home at times. Um, it was nice to kind of connect with the staff again. Um, one other thing was that the RFID tagging that you said that some of our staff members are actually going to be contract subcontracted to the company to do do the tagging. I think that's wonderful because now our staff's going to know how to do it. And yeah. um, what's the expectation for when that's starting? Um, it's going to be, I believe, right after Christmas. So we're right now, I'm just, my next step is I've talked to the person who's doing the overall planning. She's going to have the person who will actually be supervising the workload and like doing the interviews for people. Cause they actually, it's like, you know, kind of like its own little, um, workplace for a while where they, they actually do interviews and hire and she said they're going to be happy to hear that a lot of the staff are interested because then that way they don't have to hire you know like it, it will probably just make everything a lot quicker and more convenient to have the staff in the building and people that we know um, but they do the interviews and we just set up the schedule and the training part of it and then um, they said that the first part of it will be the actual um, just getting the staff in there and getting trained on how to do the process. I believe that's going to start, we don't have a firm date yet, but right after Christmas. All right, any other questions with the library director's report? Okay, seeing none. Committee and liaison reports, policy review. Melanie. I don't think I have anything to add to reports. We've got a bunch of action items coming up, so I'll talk more then. Thank you. Uh, facilities. The facilities committee hasn't met since our special meeting. So well, there's nothing to report. Makes sense. Uh, DDA, Emily. I have a lot. Um, so I actually had three meetings since the last time we met, there were three different DDA meetings. So I just binge watched them um, and I will give you a rundown of stuff. I mean, they covered a lot of issues. I'll give you this, the items that were pertinent to us. So at the 1028 meeting, um, they were still talking about doing the cookie crawl and the strolling parade, which were like people would walk around and look at the, the floats. They were talking about doing that for December 12th. 
Um, they ended up voting that down. They didn't want to be, become like a super spreader event. Uh, they were talking about instead doing like um, possibly putting the money into projections, which I thought they were like talking about like projections into next year, but they're actually talking about literal projections onto buildings. <laughs> so um, yeah, I guess it's a, a big thing they've really been wanting to start doing is like projecting, you know, advertisements for events and stuff onto the city buildings. So that'll be something interesting to see. They also talked about at that meeting, the YIFTI agreement. So the YIFTI are the gift cards that um, you'll remember they did the $20 of downtown bucks back in the summer. Uh, their new plan was for the Christmas season to have a match program for the YIFTI gift cards. So um, they, and I think it, I believe it started at hundred dollars and then they would match it um, for anybody buying gift cards. And they were already running into some issues in the October meeting because YIFTI sounded like was kind of changing up some stuff with the, um, there was all these extra costs that they hadn't planned for. So they had to vote to absorb the extra costs. So DD, the DDA did approve covering those costs. And the 11-11 meeting, the YIFTI saga continued because they had to, it started out as very dramatic. They had to suspend the YIFTI program. <laughs> um, what they found out was that business owners were buying gift cards and then getting the match from the DDA and the fund. So they kind of found a way to game the system. <laughs> um, so they had to make an emergency um, uh, approval to suspend the program until they figured out how to rework it. What they did vote on is they ended up lowering the, dom the nominations. Um, so it could be less than 100. And um, they lowered the match to only 50%. And I believe they also made, they put in some um, safeguards to make sure that people can keep buying, like, I guess people are buying like, you know, like 20 gift cards on one account. So to um, kind of protect against then people just buying a ton of gift cards, they put some kind of a limit on it. Um, and they were able to restart up the program after that. They sold the giant Christmas tree. I think that was the one that they had issues with that came from China a few years ago. So they sold that off to Canterbury Village. Um, farmer's Market, Robin from the Farmer's Market attended and she talked about they had wanted, they're gonna do a tree lighting at the Farmer's Market. And I did not get the date on that, but um, they're going to be doing like some kind of a Christmas. It was last oh, week. Okay. Last week. All right. <laughs> um, so they were, she was asking the DDA to cover the dollar amount for, um, to, she was asking for, I think like $5,500 from the DDA to help with the tree lighting cost. And they ended up approving covering the dollar amount for the actual tree lighting. Um, there were some concerns expressed about being like a COVID friendly event. And um, she reassured them that they, you know, the farmer's market has been operating the whole time and they have a pretty good handle on how to keep things safe at this point. Um, then the video marketing Scroove, if you're familiar with that, that's come up at other meetings. So Scroove was a, it's like a PR group that is doing their social media videos. And they did some like promotional videos for downtown Royal Oak. Um, the question was whether to renew their contract for 12 months. Um, there is some concerns raised at this meeting. One, Paul Brake brought up that people have been concerned that it doesn't reflect many demographics in Royal Oak. If you watch any of the videos, it really kind of um, targets, I would say like 20 something males and that's about it. It's like very like heavy on the bar scene um, and the restaurants and kind of like the hip stores and everything like that. And so they didn't approve anything at that meeting. They decided to take it back to their, their marketing committee and then um, talk about it at their next meeting. That was also a special meeting. I believe they had to have the special meeting possibly because of the YIFTI thing too. Um, so then they had another meeting on 11-18 and now it was the Scroob saga. This was the most contentious I've ever seen the DDA um, where they had a lot of uh, disagreement about Scroob and wanting to, what to do with going forward with them. Um, so they, the, it was up on the table to renew them for a year and um, there was a lot of back and forth about whether it's an effective marketing campaign. Some of the directors were saying that it's greatly increased social media use. Director London challenged that. She said that she's been talking to business owners and they reported no uptick in their business or social media following the campaign. Um, so this group gets paid $80,000 a year for four videos a month. So that was another thing is like, you know, that's a pretty expensive contract and is the content, the volume of content really worth it. Um, 
Let's also mention why is the DDA taking on social media when it's really the business's responsibility is to be handling their own social media. And again, everybody was concerned with, well, some people are concerned with the lack of demographics outside of 20 something young men. Um, so there, there was a lot of discussion about this. Um, they had a split vote originally, and then they ended up, so they revised the proposal and they are going to renew it for three months and they're gonna review at that point. And it just brought up a lot of questions about their social media strategy. Uh, you know, as a stakeholder in the DDA, we're dues paying members. I gotta say, I'm disappointed that we weren't included in the screw videos at all. You know, I was watching some of them today and they covered like paper trail books and everything like that. I feel like it left out a lot of the non not-for-profit places in Royal Oak who are also DDA members. I definitely agree that it really left out um, major demographics within the city. Um, and I guess my, my question is, you know, they were mentioning that they really, that um, they want to target millennials and Gen, Gen Zs. And my thought on that is you can do that for free on TikTok, probably very effectively. I was watching some TikToks. I just searched Royal Oak on TikTok and like the first videos I came up on had 80,000 views. So that's, nobody asked my opinion on it, but if they did, that would be my question for them is maybe they should look into um, if they, there's ways to reach that demographic that I think would cost a lot less money. Um, then they mentioned they ended with there's still some confusion on the gift cards because it like the way it's stated it says you know, buy 50 get $75 so people are thinking like they're going to get a $75 gift card when it really it means like you'll get half of that back so even though you pay 50 you're going to get the $25 match um, and then um, so they were talking about like maybe Sean Cameron said they haven't had a lot of people asking for clarification, um, but he would change the wording if they do. And then they are also going to match Royal Oak School's purchase for gift cards for the staff for their um, holiday presents. They're going to contribute $6,660 as a match for those gift cards. I hope those weren't supposed to be a surprise to those teachers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thanks, Emily. That was a very thorough report. You've been to a lot of DDA meetings since we saw you last. <laughs> yeah. I've been to those all in the last few wow. days. Wow. So. Do you have any yeah. questions, trustee? I like the continuity of watching them, though, like right after each other, because they really do like pick right back up on the You're issues, really following so. a, a narrative, aren't you? Yeah. Uh, are there questions for Emily or any discussion about what you've heard? I mean, I'm feeling like we need to be doing something on TikTok now that you mention it, Emily. We have a TikTok page for the library. <laughs> are you are you doing the little dance challenges though? Becca has done some dancing. That's so Becca amazing. handles it completely. She calls herself our resident millennial. <laughs> she just, just have her do all but, this. Um, yeah. It, yeah, it's cute. The stuff she does on there, though, she's real good on our TikTok page. I feel like TikTok's just so good for viral marketing. I feel like it's such an ideal match for a downtown area, though, because I follow TikTok just to get recommendations for I found so many restaurants and stores and stuff just because I saw the TikTok for it. So, yeah, if the DDA wants my opinion on their marketing strategy, that would be it. That's your number. That's your top strategy. <laughs> okay, we're going to move into fundraising. We heard a uh, update from Emily about um, the money flowing in. Uh, I'm assuming the fundraising committee itself probably doesn't have much else to say, do you? Not much, but I did want, there's something I did want to mention, and that is um, Emily's administrative assistant, Stephanie, has been keeping records about what other libraries are doing for fundraising and has a whole bunch of ideas. And it, just a sidelight, it made me realize because she didn't realize that we had a fundraising committee that might be interested in that. So I kind of thought maybe we should also make an effort to make sure the staff knows what we do more often. Sounds but like it turns Stephanie out should be invited to a committee meeting, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, something. Like maybe anyway, but, um, I emailed Catherine and Erin and said, I really want to try to get them introduced because she 
had all kinds of things. And it was like, we were going, you know, like all kinds of ideas, which of course I'm passing off. But um, I just thought it was great because she is just a great reference. And I have worked with her, as you know, on the QSAC, which is a, just for Eric, Library of Michigan <laughs> certification program that our library has. We're at the second tier and, um, and stuff. And, and we have to do that every three years. So that got a couple years because we did it this past year to make sure we were covered. Uh, so particularly knowing that I wasn't going to be there to do it. <laughs> so I wanted to make sure we got it in. But um, I've worked with her a lot and she's so helpful and so knowledgeable. So I just wanted to you know mention that as well, because she's also to go right into the director goals and evaluation. She was also my tester to make sure that the links and things worked. And if anybody got it and it's not working, let me know. It was very, Google Forms was extremely glitchy this year. I sent it to myself like three times before I got it to, to do a test. So and that for next year, um, might wanna think ahead and check out the platform because we might want to do something like go to survey monkey or something because it was just a lot of glitches and i'm hoping the responses come in if you haven't checked your email or you didn't get an email from me about the uh the evaluation let me know so i can get it out but i know the staff at least some staff got theirs because I, there's three responses for staff. i got mine thank you you got yours, so that's good. But that was, you know, one of the things is, is she, I needed somebody on the outside to test it. And, um, but even when I sent it to myself, it, it glitched, it just, things disappeared. Hmm. So it was kind of, it's kind of odd. Like she did one and sent it and it just disappeared. I never got, it just went into thin air. And I did one too, and it did the same thing. And I can't explain it. But other than that, um, the director evaluation is out. We are going to do everything we can to get it compiled before the end of the month. And then you will have the report for the January meeting. So, okay, so you've moved in. So, thank you. You've moved us along to director goals and evaluation. So, the message is fill out the Please evaluation fill out, if you don't uh, get one. Maybe, maybe contact Catherine yeah. or Aaron because Roxanne is all she's finished her duties so um and the deadline is when is is monday the 21st monday the 21st so do it soon so they can compile the information yeah thank you uh nominating you reported last month um yeah i don't have anything new from that anybody come knocking down your door and say no i want to be the secretary i would like okay so I don't know, in north carolina i don't know maybe yeah, who knows what they did um so in january eric will meet and one of the items on the agenda will be to elect officers we do that every year in january and uh the officers are born in our bylaws um our president vice president and secretary those are the three and um, last month, the nominating committee reported that I am um, I'm willing to serve again as president and Catherine is going to serve as vice president and Aaron as secretary. In the meantime, if someone gets really inspired and wants you know, to take that on, I guess, contact Catherine or Melanie and they'll sort that out so we can have an exciting election in January. <laughs> okay. Uh, action items. All right. Uh, 10A, we have approved 2021 meeting calendar. Is oh. there a motion? All right, Mark. I'll second. Yeah, second. Or... Oh. Okay. Any discussion about this meeting calendar? I missed the second. Who was the second? Carla. Um, it looked good to me. The big question is always the December one. And if we do it, if we would do it on the, what, the 7th or the 14th? I think the 14th makes sense. It splits the difference of. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? 
let the record reflect that this motion was passed unanimously. Next, we have approved the 2021 planning calendar. Carla motions to approve the 2021 planning calendar. Catherine seconds. Catherine seconds. Discussion. Melanie has discussion. Just, I'm just gonna say that um, it came up during this that whether or not uh, our, wait, this is the one that has the policies in it, yes policies schedule as well the, the review of policies and whether or not this does cover all the policies apparently it didn't used to according to brandon um and now it does cover all that so anyway okay. just so Thanks, on that. okay any other discussion okay um, all in wait, favor so oh. how is it how is it changed so that it's now covering policies better i think she stuffed more policies in there is that right emily well, you know, I, I mean, just looking at what we had, they were all on there except the pandemic policy, which I put on there. So I don't know if maybe in the past, but I think Stacy, you and I re revised it last October, if you remember. We did. <laughs> and, um, yeah, so I think that we put them all in at that time. Yeah. Um, so yeah, now everything should be covered. And I know some of them probably won't change much, but it's probably good practice just to always look over it and get a fresh set of eyes on it each year. Yep. And like, if like a hundred year pandemic comes along, then we just add that to the calendar of things to, to look at. Right. Yeah. Okay. All in favor. Uh, oh, aye. 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 all opposed. Sorry, Erin. Okay. Let the record reflect that this motion was passed unanimously. Do you have something? Can I, um, sorry. I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, I just want to make a comment or suggestion. I know I've brought it up before. If I, if, I'm a paper person, unfortunately. If we can get a printout of all the policies in one document, that'd be so helpful. You mean on the website? Anywhere. I think on the website now, don't you have to click on each one? Last time I checked, it was that way. You know, that was something that came up in our, our meeting too, is um, we have already, I've been talking to the staff because it's really, um, Ed, Stephanie and I all have hands on the policies on the staff side of it. And we've been talking for a while about needing a, a different system um, just because sometimes it gets a little confusing, you know, or if you like don't make a change right after the meeting, sometimes it can get missed and you have to go back through all the minutes and figure out what got changed. So um, we're working on a different system, probably using Google Docs would be the best because that will keep track of the changes. And then um, also too, I would like the idea then of, you know, with our master document, being able to print that up for incoming board members too, so that you know, I can make that part of your welcome packet. Thank you. Sure, thank you. Next, um, action item C, approve 3.50 library hours and holidays. So moved. Mark moves, is there a second? I'll second. Carla, second. Discussion? Okay. Last call? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Let the record reflect that this motion was passed unanimously. All right, next we have um, Action item D, approve revisions to policy 8.0, emergency pandemic response. Is there a motion? I'll move approval. Okay, Melanie moves. Catherine seconds. Thank you. Discussion? Melanie. Um, so I, I, don't, I didn't know if people wanted us to walk through all this. We, we spent a little bit of time on it. Um, okay, so yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> okay, hold on. I have like a thousand tabs. I've lost my thing. I know. Which page are we on at this point? Five from the end. One, two. Got it. Okay, Melanie, take it away. Okay. Still, here it is. Okay. Um, sorry, my computer 
Not where I want Oh my god, it's someone screaming? Melanie. Oh. Ah. We're, wa we're watching the Amazing Race. Exciting. All right. Yeah, you, you don't want to hear the noises in my house right now. My husband's re running a meeting in the room right next door, and I can hear everything they're saying. I don't know if you can hear two meetings if I'm unmuted, but. <laughs> My kids usually walk into the background of mine and they're being so good today. <laughs> so my computer is really struggling to get me. Okay, all right, I think I made it. Uh, all right. Um, okay, so the circulation fine suspended. Remember we made this, this is all of these changes really are reflective of the fact that we made a lot of decisions in March before we had any idea what this was gonna look like. And now we have some experience and we know what we're doing. So um, we had suspended all fines, but um, Emily might need to explain this if, if there's any questions. Uh, but we are in fact, like fines are accruing on the system. We're just not collecting them. Like once the once it comes back in, they're cleared from the system. But she didn't feel like it was accurate to say that we are, that the fines are suspended when in fact the system is continuing to calculate them um, and they can put a block in your account unless you call and contact them. Is that accurate, Emily? Yeah. Yeah. So um, when we did start setting due dates again, which was September 30th, um, was when we had materials come due. So that just meant that that was kind of the point where we're going to make a push to start getting materials back. Um, how our system would work then is when we set a due date, then it would start accruing fines and um, it would block your account after you got to the $15 threshold. However, we're being um, very understanding of the difficulty during the pandemic of um, getting to the library and um, you know you may need to hold on to stuff a little bit longer. We just clear fines. We're checking everything in fine free. That makes it easier too, because we also quarantine for 96 hours. So um, that wouldn't be fair. You know, it would just make it a, a big headache for everybody then to try to account for all that. We just go ahead, check everything in fine free wipe all fines. Um, we also too, if people contact us and say, hey, my account's blocked, but I returned my stuff. I just want to, um, you know, be able to place a hold. We would just go ahead and unblock their account too. So well, we are being lenient in practice, I just wanted the policy to reflect that so that people would say like, oh, hey, my account did get blocked because technically it still can. So that's what that's about. Thank you. Can you explain? And then she just she, she just said the next change, which is um, they're holding the public for 96 hours instead of 72 hours. That's just the practice they have in place. Um, homebound services are happening. So we took that part out that it was not happening right now. Um, and we had put this in uh, this wording about staff members unable to work and how they could, could work from home and we would continue to pay them because we didn't know what the uh, supports were going to be and we wanted to make sure our staff would do that. But now there are supports in place and in fact, if anyone had, requires accommodations, Emily sends them to, to the city HR department. So we just changed it to reflect that. Um, so that's all for this one. And then the health check is not, um, it's an app, not a person. So we don't we took that part out of 8.86 um there is build, building maintenance happening obviously there's gonna be a lot of building non-essential things happening with the renovation coming up soon so we wanted to make sure that we weren't violating the policy there and then this just last one 8.11.2 is to reflect um the following the mi safe start map instead of what we had initially followed with the safe start plan so that is the summary of that anybody have questions Will they get renumbered? So it's a little bit contentious because <laughs> Brandon, oh. was, Brandon was the one making the edits and he kept insisting that we add new numbers <laughs> instead of just editing the numbers. So, I mean, and I get his point, right? Because if we ever want to refer back to policy 8.1 point, whatever. Um, so Yes, we. I will renumber them. Does how does the board feel about the adding numbers versus, you know, having it be sequential? You see what I mean? Like there would be a strikeout eight point four point two or whatever it is because we had it and don't, or it would just be missing. Um, and then we would. Wait, have is there a way to keep an archive of this version and then reflect on the bottom, added like revised on this date? It seems like so the simpler the that's better. The is what I think. I'm in favor of renumbering, making it simple, but I'm also okay with keeping a record in case there's ever a question about policy at a certain point. 
how do others so one of the things we talked about that emily already alluded to was this um the google drive is and having these having versions available but then also having a publishable document that is like you know similar to a separate folder that um you know has the final draft but then allows us to keep all the versions by date um so that would be my vote as well Catherine, that's what I exactly what I was going to say. And then we could just have the revision date on it that notes that it's the most recent one, because I think some of these policies, you know, this is a, a bit of a newer one. But if we start to employ that in all of our policies, we're going to have crazy numbers because some of them have been around and will continue to be around for a while. Well, yeah, I think I agree. it only really comes into play in the transition period between as the policies are shifting. Once we're this is in place for a couple of months, nobody needs to look at the old policy, right? Because they're not concerned with if if they broke the policy because you have the new one and that's the one you're supposed to follow. The only time the I can see it would matter would be if they're um, the, like where the um, code of conduct ones, like so if there's people that have been um, like who've lost their privileges at the library, we'd want to know what the policy was when that happened. I can see that, but I think you're right for these other things. It's not as important. Well, I can see it coming up in a lot of things like, you know, hey, when I checked this out, I was allowed to have 45 renewals and now I'm not like, you know, um, so I can see it coming up in other circumstances. I also, I mean, within Google Drive, as I think most people know, it does its own versioning. So like you can yeah. go back and look at every single edit that happened, but still I think it's worth keeping just for our own sakes copies. But Yes, I think we'll do that. So Emily, I will work on the renumbering to get this back to you. Thank you. Okay, are there any um, questions about the revisions to the pandemic policy? Um, I just wanted to comment, um, make the statement that I appreciate that trustee, previous trustee Colo came back to help on this because he has a lot of knowledge and has been working with that team. So. Yep, and it's my understanding that Brandon uh, will be um, transferring over all like the files and all the things to the committee and then um, he'll help as needed if the he's always there to help and we appreciate that. Yeah, I think he doesn't actually have that much. He said he thinks most things have already been transitioned to the drive, um, but he's certainly like if anybody needs anything for the library board, Brandon is happy to do it. So don't hesitate. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, any questions about the revisions, Erin? On 8.1.3, it says the library will not collect in-person payment for fines and fees. Um, this was a little um, misleading for me. Um, hopefully this doesn't go in the notes. Um, we lost a piece of cat book and I couldn't find it. And so I did have to pay a fee I paid it online, but I did have to pay that fee until I could continue checking out books. So I don't know if we need to make a clarification, even if we just took out the word fees, so no in-person payment for fines would be collected, but but uh, fees are being collected online. Is the intention of this line to be that we're not doing it in person, that it's contactless? Yeah, I think that that's why that was written the way it was. Um, okay. Was just to make it clear that we wouldn't be like it, letting people come into the building to pay. Okay, because at first when I read it, I assumed, oh, that means we're not collecting any fees or fines regardless. And then I also got a little confused because it's under circulation fines and my fee was a little different than a circulation fine. So I just wanted and to I be clear. Don't put that part in the minutes about yeah. people's cap, please. I think what it's it a good is that we do still collect for items that are lost. Okay. Um, so, you know, while we clear overdue fines, if somebody has, you know, lost or damaged to the point that we wouldn't be able to circulate and circulate it anymore, then they would still be responsible for that item. So maybe, you know, that's something we could review is um, the language of that and kind of clarify that a little bit better going forward. Yeah, because I think it's also assumed that really what we put in this pandemic response policy um, kind of trumped all other policies in a lot of ways. So that's also why I thought maybe we should make the distinction. Because if I read this now, I'd be like, wait, I paid for that and I didn't even have to, so. Yeah. 
I mean, so yeah. that now makes me wonder, the section is worded, circulation fines suspended. That's, that whole section is gone. Yeah, and so it's gone. So. So I think, yeah, I, I hear what you're saying. I, I feel like it, it is confusing that it says circulation fines suspended, that title no longer exists. Um, and the fact that it says we'll not collect in-person payment or fines or fees underneath that heading makes it sound like we're not collecting anything at all. Right. We'll go back to policy review to do a slight clarification. In fact, maybe I'll do what Scott used to do, which was just make an edit and send it around and see if policy review is okay with that. You feel good about that? Send it okay. to the committee, you're saying? Or send it from send, the, send it to the, to the board? Send it to the send committee. Send it to the committee. Yeah. So we're still so talking we... about amending it as presented right now. They're not, you're not amending, you're not trying to make a change right now. Is that what I'm hearing, Melanie? I, I think not. I think we should go with this. It's still better for go now. With this, and then we'll... Knowing that it could come back again next month with more specific changes. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. Any other discussions? Okay. I'm waiting on my wait time. So which uh, Pete the Cat was it? I need it for the notes. <laughs> I don't remember. I lost it. <laughs> it didn't pop up right when you paid the fine. That's usually what happens to me. Okay. Um, all in favor of the... Uh, changes to the pandemic policy as presented, say aye. 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 All opposed? Let the record reflect that this motion passed unanimously. Thank you, Policy Review Committee. I know it's a lot of work to keep up with all these, and we appreciate you doing it in these very strange times when we're just kind of doing the best we can. I feel like, though, to um, particularly to um, Trustee Colo's credit, um, that policy got us through pretty far into a pandemic, to a hundred year pandemic. So um, I appreciate it. I th okay. I, I think uh, Director Dumas also had a lot to do with that. Yes. I was mostly saying that because I think Brandon's watching this meeting, Mark. He's not, he's at, he's at, he's at um, Dave's meeting. Oh, he's at the meeting that's happening? Okay. Yeah, because he's, uh, he's on the executive board. Okay, excellent. All right, uh, next we Still have- Still in your house though. Still here. Action item E, revision to policy 5.101, circulation of magazines. How exciting. Anyone wanna move this? I'll move it. Okay, Melanie, your second. I'll second, Karen, Ms. Karen. Discussion. What is this change? Okay, so right now, magazines, and this is the way it's always been, is that you couldn't renew them and you couldn't place holds on them um, with the idea that we didn't want our magazines going on delivery and getting destroyed. However, they are not able to go at all because you can't place a hold on them and you can't send them out. So we're getting all these new magazines in. I mean, we have a ton of subscriptions that otherwise are not going to go out. So this is just to give these wonderful selection of magazines a chance to move and be used by the public. Any other discussion? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Let the record reflect that this motion was passed unanimously. I'm so glad that these magazines are going to circulate. How exciting. Yeah. That's so sad, they've been sitting there. <laughs> okay, um, next we have action item F, revision of policy 5.01, circulation of hotspots. Is there a motion? Or, is someone gonna move it? So moved. Mark, is there a second? I'll second, Roxanne. Thanks, Roxanne. Okay, discussion. So some clarification on this one. Um, what is changing on this is before hotspots were 
um, only in person checkout. So like you'd have to be in the library and see it and check it out. Because the idea was, again, we didn't want to be sending it out in delivery. We didn't, we also know that too, there can be kind of a hot ticket item. So we didn't want people placing on holds like um, that it would be something because we don't want it to sit on the hold shelf. So it'd be like kind of first come first serve. However, that's not practical with our current system. You have to be able to place a hold to check anything out. Um, and the, um, so to, make and honestly that's we did open up that hold um because probably i know probably some of you have already checked out hot spots and you're wondering how you do that we were in practice doing that so this is to make sure that we're in line with what we're doing um and we're actually putting into our policy so to temporarily um we're going to keep the loan period the same but to open up to holds allowed so that um it works with our current system so my question is the holds are different than it being able to be put on hold from another library like this are they going to be sent to other libraries or is it only within ropl that you can put a hold on it and use it um so with the hotspots we would still keep it local hold so a local hold means that somebody and it opens it up so that somebody could place it on hold from a different library but they'd still have to pick it up at royal Oak. So that way then we're not sending them out in the delivery where you know they could potentially get destroyed but um we will open it up so that residents with uh, as long as their tln library would be able to still place a hold for contactless pickup melanie so i thought we had said royal oak residents only i thought that we do have some things that circulate royal oak residents only right or is or are well, they all just that would be a hold only um type and that yeah so it's kind of um i know it's a little bit of a misnomer because it does with the local holds um that's usually then that's primarily then who does check it out but as long as it's picked up at a royal oak library with the idea you know um, i mean like in times when we're in person what that would mean is that um somebody could you know like we have like certain new items that are for Royal Oak residents only. However, if somebody was in the library and he had a TLN card, they could still check it out. It's basically, it's more like, um, it ties it to the checkout library than it does the actual card, if that makes sense. I didn't know that, but it makes sense. Any other discussion about this item? All in favor of the new circulation of hotspots parameters? Say aye. 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 All opposed? Let the record reflect that this motion was passed unanimously. So next we have the mysterious action item 10G, which is an adoption of a recognition resolution. I bet Catherine might wanna move this. Do, you want Do to I need to move for the reading of it? Yeah. Okay. I make a motion that we ex read and accept a resolution recognizing Roxanne Plater. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay. So I think I'll try to share my screen. We'll see how this goes. How are you guys doing with that? Good. Can you see it? Yep. Roxanne, can you see it? Yes. Okay, so I'll read it. <clears throat> this is a resolution of appreciation for an acknowledgement of the service, dedication, and work of Roxanne Plater. Whereas Roxanne Plater has spent nine years on the Royal Oak Library Board working tirelessly to support the library and all who use it, and whereas Roxanne is a master gardener and has brought natural beauty to the library's landscape through her care and cultivation of and advocacy and volunteer coordination for the butterfly garden. And whereas Roxanne spearheaded the quality services audit checklist, QSAC application process, ensuring that high standards are set and followed in the areas of governance and administration, human resources, services, collection development, technology, facilities and equipment and public relations and that a high rating was achieved for the Royal Oak Public Library. And whereas Roxanne served as the director uh, review committee of the board, specifically working to ensure the needs of the staff were being met and advocating on their behalf. 
And whereas Roxanne also served on fundraising committee of the board, encouraging vital donations that help support top notch services and collections. And whereas in her time supporting the library, Roxanne also served on the Friends of the Library Board and spent copious time overseeing and working in the Friends Bookshop. Now, therefore, be it resolved that we, the members of the Royal Oak Public Library Board, do hereby recognize the contributions of Roxanne Plater over the last nine years with great appreciation and offer her our gratitude for her service. Here, here. I think we should unmute and clap. Thank you. That was so nice of you guys. And I'll tell you, this you guys have been so great to work with. Um, really being on the board has been a really good experience and it's one I value. And the nice thing about going is I know it's left in wonderful hands. <laughs> you will be missed, Roxanne. Thank you. Oh, I, I actually you. miss you guys. <laughs> Because <laughs> I don't get to see anybody either. <laughs> well, you're welcome anytime like to come, you know, mm -hmm. hang out and, you know, talk about QSAC and all those <laughs> library things. Yeah. Um, Melanie. I was going to say, Roxanne, I wanted to put in that you dragged us through the QSAC pocket process, kicking and screaming, but that was not an approved resolution term, so we did not. <laughs> I also, I also just want to thank you for being so welcoming for those of us who were new to the board and didn't know and it feels like you are the library and you, you know all the things about the library and the friends and the butterfly garden and I still have some of your, well still, it's only been a few years, your swamp milkweed out front and, I, and that you gave me those seeds so I really appreciate all that you've done to help me to get accustomed to this and um, to grow my garden so I look forward to seeing you in the, in the butterfly garden in the library as we Hopefully, get through this pandemic soon. Yeah. Thank you. Well you done. Great. And a special thank you to Catherine for pulling all to language together. Oh, Catherine. How lovely. Thank you. You're welcome. It's been nice working with you, Roxanne. Thank you. It's been good working with you, even though it's been a short time. And we're going to mail you an official one. So you'll oh. get it in writing. You okay. can put it in your scrapbook. <laughs> okay, so we don't have any discussion items. So the last thing we have is adjournment. Do we need to officially accept Oh, you want to accept the resolution? Yeah. Okay, let's do it. Any discussion about this resolution about how amazing Roxanne is and all of the things she's done? No, we don't have anything else to say. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Let the record reflect that this motion was passed unanimously. Thank you again, Roxanne. Well, thank you. Here, here. And finally, we have adjournment. So moved. Oh, I move to adjourn. We'll let Mark second it. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? You want to hang out somewhere? No? I do want to confirm, Roxanne, you said you were going to help us with the director evaluation. Absolutely. I'm, I'm <laughs> on till the end of the month. Remember that. It okay, didn't so expire today. We have till the 31st. <laughs> so, Aaron, you're a yes vote for adjournment now that you've clarified that? What was that? <laughs> you're a yes vote for adjournment now? Yes, I am. Okay, good. <laughs> All right. Let the record reflect that this motion passed unanimously. Good seeing everybody, even if it's just through a Zoom screen. It's good to see you. Welcome, Eric. Yes, it's welcome. Nice to meet you all. Here, here. And uh, we Happy will all. see you in January. And we will swear in. Let's see who else gets a. Someone, some more people get swearing in. Aaron, are you? Do you have to renew? Someone's renewing. Catherine. I just did. But I think we swear you in again in January. Again? You okay. Do it again, I think. All right, cool. I've done that <laughs> as well, because I I picked up somebody's term and okay. I ended in, in December. Gonna I think tomorrow. you were on the agenda item for city commission with me, Erin. Okay. okay. Yeah. And then um are we getting another new member? And then we'll have another new member. Because we're really at once Roxanne leaves, 
Two members. Two yeah, spots, we right? need Roxanne and then we need uh, Trusty Colo's replacement. So look at us. And then Actually, we'll I think, I think, oh yeah. I yeah. feel like we have a we lot of work to do friends. still. So like we need, we need some help around here. We do. Eric, think about people that you'd like us to, to join us on the um, commission. And then we get to, you know, get Mayor Fournier, like we can buy, please appoint this person. Will. Okay. So think about it. If you know some folks, let's talk. We like to okay. Take and That's what I was going to say. Yes, who? exactly. <laughs> People who like to take notes. Do I start in January or February, just to be clear? Oh, it's January. January. Oh. It's January. <laughs> I'm, start. I'm kind of excited because I don't know a lot about Robert's rules. So I think it'll actually be pretty helpful. Okay. Excellent. So, um, Good to see everybody. Happy holidays if you celebrate and happy new year. 2020. Next time I see you, it'll be 2021. And um, who just wrote that there's a meeting on December 21st? There's not. A uh, city commission meeting? City commission. City commission. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Well, good night, everybody. And thank you to Carol if you're listening for all your support. Um, okay. Thanks. Good night, everybody. Happy holidays, everybody. Bye, Roxanne.